welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing extremely fine and this video or this series of video is going to be very exciting as it's going to be germany versus poland and it's one of the most requested videos from you guys so uh, on this video we are going to have a very special guest so let's just see who is our guest of honor i can say who's going to pass us some good chunk of information and who's going to help us to know more about germany yeah so guys we have a uh, uh, bharat choudhury with us today from germany and he's going to provide us some information about uh, germany and obviously we have our information about poland from our channel also so without wasting much time let's begin with this video bharat first of all welcome to my channel mm -hmm. thank you so much yeah. for having me here basically we are going to discuss about the cost of living we are going to discuss about the tr pr mm -hmm. and the citizenship the quality of life and uh, the universities and you know uh, basically uh, uh, everything about uh, germany versus poland is something that uh, we are going to discuss today so let's uh, begin with uh, the cost of living in germany absolutely so um i think this is like pretty interesting because when i started like you know the country comparisons of different kind of countries we compared with like you know sweden norway denmark like mm -hmm. we are living in denmark right now and we have a business in romania and we have lived in germany so yeah. we have been all over europe like yeah. we have seen that like you know poland for example like it is one of the countries like where the cost of living is generally cheaper than yeah. germany yeah. so in germany if you're talking about the rent and stuff as a student when you come to germany you're paying anywhere from like let's say 250 to 350 euros mm -hmm. um in the western and southern south uh, southern side of germany and when you go towards the eastern german side then you're paying the accommodation fee of anywhere from like you know 120 to 180 euros so like eastern germany is very very cheap mm -hmm. the grocery cost if you think about it's not a lot so like it's like around 100 euros 150 euros um for yeah. a month so for students that's also like pretty affordable then you have to pay the health contribution so the the health insurance contribution so that is mm -hmm. 110 euros per okay. month so like and then you have like you know 8 euros for phone and like you know just i think like when you have 20 euros for the internet but that is generally divided by two people so like you know 10 euros each mm -hmm. so in the end you end up with like you know 550 euros 600 euros some numbers like that so like this covers pretty much everything that you're going to need when you're going to live in germany So that's like so in Germany no student lives on their own. So like um yeah. like having your own apartments that's not a concept at all like German students you would see like they would also be living with other people. Mm -hmm. So um let's say this is like 250 to 350 euros mm -hmm. that's like your standard for um accommodations like shared accommodations yeah. but if you're living on your own and like you know you want um your own bedroom and you have a living room and you have a kitchen and things like that so we also like live separately Alina and I in Hamburg. Mm -hmm. and they are like for an apartment of like 60 square meters we were paying around um 550 euros but like that had everything like included so we had like a rent yes. this rent included Five, water electricity so 550 euros is just 2500 so yeah. yeah yeah it's it's comparatively uh, much cheaper I mean, yeah, for, we, we got a we got a good good deal, Sally. Yeah. I have to tell you because, like, generally, like this is not the cost. Like the standard Actually, cost there would be like you know for this kind of apartment, like at least um seven hundred to eight hundred euros. So like I wouldn't yeah. go like below seven hundred for something like this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, sounds sounds cool. And mm -hmm. uh, now talking about uh, the TRC and the PR and uh, mm -hmm. uh, what type of visa do you require to come to Germany if you are a right. a uh, tourist uh, not especially a tourist but for students or for dependents how how is mm -hmm. it, how is it in germany right and so how much like, does it cost also so german visas in general like you know any visa that you apply for that is going to cost you around like i think um 60 euros so that like mm -hmm. translates to anywhere around like 5500 euros uh, indian rupees yeah so that's like essentially not so much but when you're coming um for any visa which is taking you like with which you're able to stay longer than 3 months because 
in the entire European Union, you have this limit of three months. Yeah. If you're staying in any place of more for more than three months, you have to register there and you have to like, you know, essentially declare your residency in that particular country. That is the st- same for us right now. If you're going to Romania and we're living like, you know, more than three, three months, then we have to like register ourselves there. If we come to Denmark, live more than three months, like that's the same story, same in Germany and so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like that's pretty much the standard. So when you're coming for tourist visa, tourist visa, you will generally get only for three months in a special. Mm-hmm of six months so okay. three months is the cooling period afterwards um and like you can apply again so in a total of like you know one year you can come to germany or like in any other eu yeah. country for six months out of one year yeah but when you're coming for longer stay purposes like you're having the you know spouse visa so family reunion visa or you're mm-hmm. having the student visa employment visa job seeker visa things like that yeah. for these you can essentially get an extension so you come to germany with the visa the visa is generally valid for three months mm-hmm. and once you come to germany like within the first week you're supposed to register yourself in one of the german city centers mm-hmm. so um they are essentially so this is also the legal limit you're not supposed to like delay it more than 14 days within 14 days you go to the uh, your okay. rat house we say or the um yeah that house essentially so like there you go and like you register yourself so that's essentially the main thing and then the application for the residence permit it doesn't take that long you can get your card like with one month once you have applied for the residence permit okay uh all right so yeah in 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 poland is uh, the visa thing is uh, really different in poland uh, uh if it's a dependent or if it's a student they generally come on a uh, type d visa which is the national visa and it's valid for one year and before one year uh you need to uh, apply for trc and just wait until then uh, until you receive your card and if you if if you haven't received your card before your visa expires you definitely have the stamping from the immigration office which allows you to stay legally here in Poland so that is uh, basically uh, uh, how visa works here and uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I, I also wanted to ask you about uh, the PR so how easy uh, is, is it to receive a German PR? Mm-hmm. So I think like Germany has um, the nice thing about Germany is like the immigration process is very streamlined because they have like Mm -hmm. dealt with so many let's say previously in Germany right now the biggest um, population of immigrants is from Turkey and I think like from Turkey they're making up around like you know um, 12.8% of people in Germany are essentially from Turkey then we have the second largest like you know immigrant population of Poland which is like around 7.6% and then so on like we have Romanians Greek people and like um, many other nationalities so because of all of this like you know immigration influx they have uh, standardized standardized these processes Mm -hmm. the permanent residency in Germany just takes 48 months so this is 48 months of you paying taxes working mm-hmm. full-time for one company or the other yeah. um, and essentially paying your social contributions afterwards you can apply for the permanent residency but permanent residence residency does not have any kind of limit for you to um, have the this german proficiency so you can like you know apply okay. for it without any kind of like you know big issues mm-hmm. but when you take a look at um you know, students who have studied in Germany and then afterwards are applying for permanent residency, they can do it in just two years of working full time. Mm-hmm. And if you're earning really well, let's mm-hmm. say you're earning, you know, above 56,000 euros, which is the high skilled, like, you know, um, EU blue card right. uh, category. Yeah. Yeah. So there essentially you can get the blue card, this permanent residency in just 21 months with B1 level German proficiency. If you don't have the German proficiency of B1 level, mm-hmm. then you will get it in 33 months. So then it gets elongated. Okay, so basically, if you have a German proficiency, you you can expect your uh, uh, cards or the PR to be received earlier than that of uh, when you do not have Absolutely. German proficiency. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. So uh, talking about uh, the cards now or the uh, PR's residency, how easy or how difficult is it to receive a blue card, and what are the terms and conditions to receive a blue card there? Hmm. So like when you are taking a look at the blue card, essentially you need to have a work contract from one of the companies in Germany. Then afterwards, you need to be above the legal limit for which they're allowed to give you the blue card. So that is generally like, you know, 56,800 euros, but that keeps on increasing every single year. This is also different for different fields. So if you're an engineer who is working in IT, you're supposed to have this much like salary and above in order to 
qualify for that. But if you're just a scientist and you're working in a research institute or you're working in a university and stuff, mm -hmm. there the limits are much lower. So like there you can also apply for the EU blue card for 43,000 euros. So this is not like such a specific limit. It depends on what kind of fields you're coming in from. Um, and essentially the paperwork is not so dramatic at all. Like you need your um, city, so your address proof, like, you know, we call it city registration in Germany, mm -hmm. yeah. then um, your contract and like, you know, what are you working as? So just basic things. It's not yeah. so problem. So uh, that pretty much sums up or uh, it's, it's quite a good chunk of information that you just uh, provided about uh, the residency cards multiple residency cards okay moving on uh, to our next topic how do people from abroad abroad than germany would find jobs in germany and mm -hmm. you know if you could provide some tips and you right. know if you could provide some websites or uh, information mm -hmm. would be uh, very helpful for us <laughs>